resume recording. Uh, I forgot to resume recording. Okay. So uh, as we were discussing that the elementary canal is going to be from where you start eating as in, we can see the picture of the fox and it, until it goes out. It's not as simple as it appears in the picture, but this is just to give you an idea that whatever the route it might take, this is how it's going to look like. This is what we mean by the elementary canal. So let's give the mic to Omar Saleh. Would like to read this slide for us? You didn't get the mic. Dr. Okay, Faisal is raising a hand. Okay. I tried to give the mic to Omar, but I think he's busy. Yes, you have the uh, mic. Hello? Yes, hello. Okay. The elementary canal. Your mouth is the entrance. Wait, so a long tube called the elementary canal. The other end of the tube is called the anus. As it passes along the canal, tiny food particles are able to get out of this canal and uh, into that could not be absorbed, passes out of the anus feces. It is taken into the mouth and begins its journey along the elementary canal. So there were three parts. Number one is the intake of the food, which is through the mouth, right? After that, second point is it has to go through the digestion and the absorption process. You, you took this as a homework. Okay, uh, Muhammad, uh, thank you for mentioning, but uh, I'm sorry, but we'll have to go through this. I know some of the things are getting repeated but inshallah we'll progress and then number three is all the food that could not be absorbed that could not be digested anymore will come out of the body through a hole called anus so you have to get rid of this which is bad for the body which is you know uh, a toxin it's a waste and if it stays inside the body it is harmful so we have to make sure that it goes out smoothly so this is the basic introduction of the elementary canal, right? Alusayn Nuri, you are already in the class, then how come you're having a second? Okay, Yasin, Antiti is here, and Malik, wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullah. So let's go to the next slide. We would like to read this and explain as well. Now, here's a difficult task. You will read. Plus, you will tell me what do you think about it. Dr. Malik is raising a hand. All right. Okay, Mister. The food inside the alimentary canal can only reach your body cells if it can get out through the walls of the tube. This process is called absorption. And so protein, starch, and fat are important nutrients. Each of these nutrients is made up of large large molecules a molecule is the tiniest particle of a substance that can exist oh, do I keep on? Oh. okay i uh, would uh, ask you Malik, to hold on i'll mute you for a while uh Faisal is raising a hand yes Faisal, do you have a question or you want to explain Faisal, i'll give you the mic uh, uh can i read can i read you have to explain the first two lines, like what is absorption and what was meant by the molecules. I want to give you, I want you to give me and the whole class your opinion about what do you think of it. Absorption is like when, when, uh, like the, uh, it's when, like, wait, I have to read everything. I didn't read it. So read and re, re, uh, you know, explain in your own words, no problem. So yani your, yani your elementary canal can only reach like 
يعني through the walls of like there are like a few tubes and the food can't reach through it. Um, the process is called absorption. That's what absorption is, right? So let's take a simple example. Because I have... wasn't in the last lesson, so I don't understand that much. No, this is the you know like a first lesson. Uh, the previous lesson was about the deficiency diseases. You're starting off with the uh, food absorption and digestion. Um, once you eat the food, like you have an apple, you can't straight away put the apple inside your body. It has a lot of uh, you know nutrients, a, a lot of energy inside the inside mm -hmm. the apple. Like you have a sponge. If you put the sponge inside the water, it absorbs the water. It gathers the water the water in its body, right? So if we try to put the apple into our body, we won't be able to do this. So what do we do? Number one is we start chewing it and we break it down into smaller pieces. Then it goes into the body. Then you further break it down. And then down. your stomach breaks it down even more. Yes, into such a small size molecule that it can get into the blood and can get into every single cell, which is a microscopic, right? So the absorption is getting the energy from the food and all those nutrients inside to my cells, this would be absorption. So good point. So Faisal, can you continue reading you, the sir. last two points? Uh, the last, okay. My, I have to take my mic because I can hear it echo. My tools of protein, starch and fat are so big that they can. They, they cannot get through the walls of the elementary canal. So in order to get these nutrients to your cells, the big molecules have to be broken down into much smaller ones. Then the small molecules can be absorbed. This is what digestion is. Digestion is the breakdown of large molecules into small ones so that they can be absorbed by your body. So by everybody yourself. is clear about the difference between absorption and digestion. Digestion is like you're hammering and yeah. you're breaking it down into small pieces and absorption is just getting into it. Right? Anybody who's not clear about this, we can have a question on it. So we have Ahmed Abul Ali raising a hand and Sami. So let's hear Sami has a question. Yes, I have yes, a question. Sir. First, uh, the, the homework, uh, you get it? First, the homework I get it. Second? I don't have a second. <laughs> okay, um, I'll be checking the homework by the due date. So the due date was, I think, 24. So you 24, have time. Yeah. Yes, you have time till that. You have to submit it. And if there's any question, just leave me an email. I'll definitely get back to you on it. Okay. okay. All right, good job. So let's go to Ahmed Abu Alain. Do you have a question? Mr. What's the title? Absorbing. Food. Uh, no, it's absorption and digestion. Mm, thank if you. We, if we go to the first slide. What is the first slide? Can I go to the first slide? Yeah, this one. Digestion and absorption. Sorry. So you have to first break down into small pieces. And then you have to absorb it into your cells, into your Yasin, uh, every week you will be given uh, a homework if you go to the canvas. Uh, right now we are on week four, so we have to do the homework from week three. Week three homework is when you go into the you know options, lesson one, two, three, you're going to find week three homework. So once you click it, you're going to find the details of it. So we are going to the next slides. Um, there is a small activity on, uh, you don't have it in your list. Okay, I'll show you uh, in a minute. Oh, hold on. What is wrong with this? Okay, we have done this, so let's go to this one. And meanwhile, uh, when the activity starts, I'll show you the canvas. So, okay, we'll put the hand down. And Malik has a question. Yes, Malik. Yes, mister. I was asking, uh, 
And will the homework be available on the to-do list? I'll try to check this. If it's given a date, the due date, then it will come to the to-do list. So I'll check it and I'll put the date if it is not there. So I'll make sure it okay, comes to your to-do you. list. So Abdul Samad says it isn't, so I'll put the date on it. Don't worry. We'll do it right now during the lesson. So looking at this, you have a starch molecule in this picture, and it's a long molecule. Actually what happens, we have a lot of glucose molecules joined together in a chain. So all of these round circles that you see, let me grab a pen, and here's the pen. So these circular points that you can see, these circles, they are actually glucose molecules, and they are you know, connected with each other in a chain. And once we break down that chain, that is called digestion. So you're making the big molecule into small particles of glucose. This is your digestion. So they are broken down into, look at this, single units. It's like you had a long chain and you cut it down into smallest possible pieces so that your cells can easily absorb it, right? So this would be my digestion. And let's go to the next. This is the activity, risking tubing, a model of uh, absorption. Uh, we're going to see a video on this so that you would be able to understand that. This is the apparatus. What you're doing is you have a beaker. You put the water inside. And you have a whisking tube. Whisking tube is like a very... Well, how do you put it? Uh, it's a very delicate plastic bag, like a tube. It's a plastic bag, just like what do you call it? You, you have the gloves. Imagine you just took one part of the glove, the finger, and you cut it, and then you use it for putting some water inside and, you know. So I'll show you that how the actually water goes out and water goes in, the osmosis is happening, and how does it apply of the you know absorption concept? So this is for the absorption. What is inside the whisking tube? What is the experiment? Let's watch uh, experiment, and then you would be able to understand. Plus, I'll show you the homework as well. So let me go to the canvas. Okay, uh, this is digestion. This is the lesson which is showing us the digestion and absorption, lesson two. And this is the video, where, which we'll watch in a minute. But let me fix the homework before we go there. So let me go to the homework. Let me put the due date for you guys. Uh, this is week three. Yasin, this is week homework, week three. And the due date is 24th September. So I'll add it and I'll put it as the due date over here so that you guys can be having this as a to-do list. Now, okay, save it. Now let's go back to the video. Are you guys able to see the Canvas page? Okay, this is the whisking tubing demonstration. I'm going to turn off my video so you can have a better. Oh, I forgot to turn on the sound. This is whisking. Okay. This is whisking tubing. It's long been used in school biology practicals. It's semi-permeable, which makes it useful as a model of the human gut, which is what I'm going to show you in this demonstration. I'm going to fill a piece of tubing with a mixture of starch and glucose, and I should be able to show that over time, the smaller glucose molecules migrate through it, whereas the larger starch molecules do not. So, we need to soak the visking tubing in um, water for a few minutes. Then Everybody's clear about the objective. What was the objective that she mentioned? Anybody who can tell me? 
Okay, Faisal is raising a hand. Yes, so Mursale, if the video is lagging, you have the link. You can play the link uh, after the lesson is over. So Faisal and Abdul Samad. Okay, Abdul Samad, you have the mic. What was the objective? What did she say? What are we going to do? To demonstrate how the uh, absorption and digestion works. She said something about the large molecules and the small molecules. What how it that? breaks down into smaller pieces. And okay, let's go to Faisal. What does he have to say? Faisal? Faisal, are you with yes, us? Mr. What did she yes, say yes, yes. about the movement of the large molecules and the small molecules? Uh, she said she said something about livers. Okay, let me put it back again. Like um, they use something as a liver. Okay, let me. And then it lagged you. for me. Okay. And then I was glitching, and I couldn't hear anyone's voice. All right, all right. Let me replay it again. This is visking tubing. It's long been used in school biology practicals. It's semi-permeable, which makes it useful as a model of the human gut, which is what I'm going to show you in this demonstration. I'm going to fill a piece of tubing with a mixture of starch and glucose, and I should be able to show that over time, the smaller glucose molecules migrate through it, whereas the larger starch molecules do not. All right, so what did she say was that we have the visking tube, and she is going to add two kinds of solution in it. One is a glucose solution, and the other is going to be a starch solution. And once she put that tube inside the water, they will be able to show that only glucose molecules can come out, and the starch molecules will stay in because of their large size. Starch molecules cannot go out of that whisking tube because they are too large, and glucose molecules can because they are too small. All right, this is the objective of the demonstration. So we need to soak the visking tubing in um, water for a few minutes. Then it should be flexible enough to work with. You want to hold one end of the tubing open. And an easy way to do that is to use the end of a sawn off syringe. So once that's in there, I'm just going to secure it with a rubber band. And I'm simply going to tie a knot at the other end of the tubing. And now I'm ready to add the starch and glucose to the tubing. So I'm going to just mix together some starch suspension, just 25 mils or so there, and some of this glucose solution. Now the concentration of glucose will affect the um, speed at which the um, results are become visible. So obviously the more concentrated the glucose is, the, the faster that diffusion will happen and the quicker you'll see the final results to the experiment. So you might want to adjust the concentration and also the length of the tubing within the boiling tube that it's going to go in to fit in with the time that you want the, the demonstration to take. So I now have my mixture of starch and glucose. Let's just give that a little mix and I'm going to syringe it into the visking tubing. So you probably want between 10 and 20 millilitres in the tubing. So a little bit more. I'm just going to clean the outside of the tubing by rinsing it with some water. Before I place it into a boiling tube, and fill the rest of the boiling tube with water. You don't need to use distilled water here. Tap water will be fine. Now, the length of the tubing that you have in the boiling tube will also um, affect the speed at which the migration of the glucose happens. So, something else to think about when you're trying this out beforehand. I'm going to take a sample straight away of each of those. So, one from inside the visking tubing and one from the water surrounding the visking tubing. At this stage, you probably want to ask your students to predict which of those samples will contain starch or glucose. Yes, so here's a question for you guys. Which of these two samples that she has taken contains starch and glucose? The first sample she took is from the visking tube 
And the second one she took was from the outside of that mystery tube. So Badawi, stop playing with your pictures. Thank you. Okay, so someone is raising a hand. Anybody else? Faisal, did you raise your hand now or is it uh, from the previous attempt? Okay, I'm lowering everybody's hand to see who's trying to answer the question. So she took two samples out, one from the western tube and one from the surrounding water, like the water in the beaker. Which one of them has the, okay, which one of them has the starch and sugar, glucose, and which one of them doesn't? So let's hear from Sami. Okay, Sami. I think from the surrounding water. All right, good job. So let's go to Al Hussein Nuri. What do you think? I think it's from the surrounding water too. So, okay, so two people say surrounding water. Faisal. Faisal, I'm trying to unmute you. I'm asking you to end. Not working? Okay. So, Abdul Samad. I see also from the surrounding water. The surrounding water, uh, the experiment hasn't started yet. So, the water inside the whisking tube contains the sugar and the starch. We are going to put the sugar and starch in the whisking tube, the plastic bag we had, the plastic kind of tube. And then we will surround it with simple water, with simple tap water. Let me show you the picture on the, uh, on the presentation. This one. Now, here's my pen, let me grab my pen. This tube contains the sugar and starch. Look at this, mixture of sugar and starch inside the whiskey tube. And this water which is surrounding it is a simple, simple water. This is simple water, no sugar in this water. And then we're gonna find out in some time that out of this sugar and starch, only the sugar was able to come out of this. Uh, Badawi wants to show something. Yes, Badawi, you have something to say? Yeah, Mr. Um... I was gonna ask, but I, first I'll answer this, okay? Okay. Um, no, actually there's nothing that, listen, can, mister, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay, hurry up then. So, thank you. So let's go back to the video and see what she's doing. And Faisal, you are not supposed to be playing with this uh, Al Hussein's video, not cloning it, please. Okay, thank you. Keep it to yourself. Thank you very much. All right, let's resume the video. You can also ask them to remind you of how you test for the presence of those two molecules. So with this first sample from inside the visking tubing, I'm going to place a drop in my tile. And I'm actually going to put the pipette back inside the tubing there so I can remember which one's which. And the same with the sample from outside the tubing. So I'm going to label these two test tubes before I forget which one's which. So inside sample one and outside the visking tubing sample one. So in order to test for the presence of starch in these samples, I'm just going to add a drop of iodine. So firstly the sample from inside the visking tubing. And yes, we can see that starch is present as we'd expected. And from the sample outside the visking tubing, we can see that there's no starch. All right, this is a test to find out if the starch is available. What we do is we add a drop of iodine. If you're looking at the iodine that she's holding in her hand, it has a color which is like, uh, we have different colors of iodine. Over here we have yellowish, pale yellow. So once we add this drop, it becomes dark purplish or blackish purplish. And it, if it changes its color, that is an in indication 
that yes, starch is there, sugar is there. And if we put the into simple water, it's going to stay. Tubing. As it is. And yes, this we can see that starch is present as we'd expected. And from the sample outside the visking tubing, we can see that there's no starch. Now, in order to test for glucose, we're going to add some Benedict's reagent to each of these two samples and place them in a warm water bath. So, just a good squirt of Benedict's reagent into each one of those test tubes. And I've just so for the glucose, we have the Benedict's reagent. She'll, she's going to demonstrate that what happens. Just boil the kettle, so a little bit of hot water into a beaker here. Don't need too much. And let's put these in here. Now this can take a minute or two to show up, but if glucose is present, we should see a colour change from the light blue here to an opaque orangey brown colour. While you're waiting for the Benedicts to react, you might want to remind your students that starch is broken down into glucose during the process of digestion. This allows the smaller glucose molecules to be absorbed into the bloodstream. So we can see this has now reacted, and what we have established here is that inside the visking tubing, at the start of the experiment, we have both glucose and starch present. And in the water surrounding the tubing, we have neither molecule present. So this point is clear for all, everyone that she confirmed by doing this iodine starch test that the starch is present and by the Benedict's reagent, she has confirmed that the glucose is there only inside the visking tube and outside the water is simply water. It contains no starch, it contains no sugar. So let's go and see what happens after a while. Now, in order to show that over time, the small glucose molecules will indeed migrate through the membrane, we need to give this some time. The exact time will depend on your practice run, but probably at least 15 minutes. So during that time, there are various activities you could be doing with your students. You might want to do a bit of work on explaining how a semi-permeable membrane behaves, and you can use demonstrations involving some loose netting, different sized balls in order to demonstrate that. Alternatively, you could have your students evaluate this as a model of the gut. The mixture of starch and glucose in the tubing here is a good representation of the different size molecules that are contained in our food. Those molecules are contained inside a tube, here the visking tubing, and in our gut, the small intestine itself. The gut is also surrounded by um, blood, and in here, our tubing is surrounded by water. And it's a semi-permeable membrane that separates those two substances. In terms of differences, there are quite a few areas where this model falls apart. So firstly, the visking tubing is very smooth, whereas the gut has folds, which increases its surface area. There are also active transport mechanisms in the gut, which help the movement of the molecules. Inside the gut, there are also enzymes present. So amylase breaks down starch into glucose. And you could ask students how they could maybe extend this model to show that, because I've simplified it by adding the glucose into here directly. So they might want to think about how the enzyme could be added to this setup to refine the model further. After enough time has passed, you're ready for the second round of tests. So once again, I'm going to take a sample from inside the visking tubing and my sample now from the water surrounding the tubing. Now you could ask your students to make a prediction at this stage about whether they think starch will be present inside or outside the tubing. All right, so here's the prediction time. She's taking the water from the outside of the tube after 15 to 20 minutes and she's going to do a starch test. Do you think the test is going to be positive or negative? Positive means the color will change and the presence of starch will be yes. Negative means the starch didn't move out of the whisking tube and it will be not present there. So I'm gonna lower everybody's hands and I'm gonna check the uh, prediction from you guys. What do you guys think? Mr. Positive, I think positive. Okay, Faisal said, now you're Faisal, your mouse is working, very good. So we'll go to, uh, one says positive, the Al Hussein Nuri, what do you say? I think I said it's positive too. 
Okay, so it says positive. And Sammy, Sammy, what do you say? What do you think? I think that this will be positive. So let me make a poll out of it. Uh, I, I don't know where is the poll option. We, we don't have a poll option here. So that, okay, so what I'm gonna do, we'll do a shortcut. If you think it's gonna be positive, that means the star just present, just raise your thumbs up. On the screen, uh, the, you know, the uh, emotion, emoticon, or what do you call it? Like Yasin, yes, can did it up to someone did it, the survey is doing it. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'll have to, you know, be the bearer of the bad news. We can see still present inside the tubing but it's not present outside the tubing. So she did the first where she confirmed. So Malik says, I hate agreeing with Faisal, so I say negative. And Malik, you are right. Inside the tube, the starch is there. Outside the tube, no, because starch is a big molecule. It cannot cross the membrane of that whisking tube. So that's why outside there was no starch. The results came out negative. So let me show Still you. present inside the tubing. This is the outside, this is the inside. But it's not present outside the tubing. It's not present outside the tubing because starch was a big, large molecule and it cannot pass through the whisking tube's membrane. Now let's check the glucose. Now Maybe. let's test for glucose. Was so able to go through it some Benedict's reagent added to each of those test tubes. So one of them is from inside and one is from the outside. And let's have a look and see if we've got any glucose. What should be the results? Both should contain glucose. So the tests should now show clearly that glucose is present both inside and outside the visking tubing but starch is only present inside the tubing. How you decide to use this will depend on the learning outcomes you want for your students. So that's the lesson for today. That was the demonstration which showed you that starch has to be broken down into glucose so that you can absorb it. If it's not broken down into glucose, you will not be able to absorb it. It will not come to our blood. It will not come to our cells. Does that make any sense? Anybody who is still not able to, you know, understand what just happened. So Malik did a good job. He was the only one who said that I don't agree. Any questions? No, so we'll go back to the presentation. Let's finish it off. So this is the activity that you have seen the video. So I want you to read this by yourself. That, there's the link of that video. It, we have seen it. And this is the summary. Who would like to summarize? So I'll give the mic to Yasin. Yasin, would you like to summarize? Yes, mister. Oh, nutrients cannot be used by body cells until they have been absor uh, absorbed through the walls of the almit almentary, almentary canal. Only small molecules can pass through the wall of the elementary canal. It's molecules, <laughs> small molecules can pass through the walls of the elementary canal. Okay, last point. Is, is the breakdown of large molecules of nutrients to small molecules so that they can be absorbed. All right, good. So yes, you try to practice to pronounce them right, like this is digestion and this is the molecules. So uh, this was the today's lesson that we have done a demonstration to show that it's not possible for the large molecules to cross through the membrane and get into our blood and get into our cells. So we have to break them down. Starch is a big molecule. It should be broken down into small microscopic molecules that it can easily go through the membrane, get into the blood, and then the blood will give it to all cells in our body. 
So we have microscopic cells. We have got billions and trillions of cells. So everyone is depending on food that we are eating. It's depending on how we digest it and then how we absorb it, right? So the, the whole lesson was about absorbing. We can't absorb large molecules, so we first break it down. Once they are breaking down into small pieces, we can absorb it. Then it can be delivered to every single cell. So that would be all for today.